Mary's shoe. This is always a super fun activity that is bound to be a kid favorite for many, many years to come after they graduate. So I want to show you some of the tips and tricks of what we do in our class and some fun activities with the parachute. So when we typically do parachute, we will have an activity that is either one of our four corner activities or um, something that can be around the parachute so that we have our parachute set up in the middle and ready to go. Oftentimes we have two parachutes because our classes are large, but that's just a tip too as far as how we run our parachute. We don't do it the entire day simply because number one, that's really hard on the teacher, but number two, we'd like to have them be more active than uh, the activities of the parachute. Now, our rules are simple. They come in, they sit around the black line, and they uh, wait for one main rule, and that is to never walk on the parachute. If you're doing parachute for the first time, they might come in and get really excited, and when you tell them to color a color to sit behind, they may run across the parachute, and obviously that's not very safe. So before we even get started, that is the number one rule. We also tell them that we're gonna give them a color and they're gonna sit behind the color. So if I get blue, I'm gonna sit behind blue, sitting crisscross, hands on my lap or hands on my knees, and I am waiting until everybody gets a spot. Now with us, our large classes, like I said, we either do two parachutes or I may share a color with someone else. Now, one coach, if you've got more than one coach in your room, one coach can be assigning or both at the same time or you can have the kids that already have a spot play some sort of a game, rock, paper, scissor, or hands on your knees, hands on your shoulders, try to trick them, Simon Says type thing, um, to keep them busy until everyone is on the shoot. Now, once we get to everyone uh, having a spot on the parachute, a couple of rules. Number one, we do not use the handles. In my classes, we're often sharing, or if we're just on our own color, we like to grab the parachute by the edge. I have found parachutes tend to rip when using the handle, so I don't use the handle anymore. I just use the edge of the parachute. We will start out very simple. We are sitting crisscross and we will do wave, ripples, excuse me, ripples, which is just moving your wrist. We talk about ripples and where we see ripples in a spring or a river, and they get a kick out of that. They also get very excited and sometimes go ahead and start doing waves and we tell them, nope, just use your wrist. We also give them the option, we don't tell them a certain way to, to hold the parachute in the beginning, but we will do waves after ripples. And waves are big arm motions, I'm just doing it small so the camera doesn't knock over, but that is waves. We will do that sitting, and then we will talk about hand position. We will tell them thumb on top, do ripples and do waves, and then we will switch and we will do our fingers on top and our thumb on bottom. We then tell them that we want them to keep this hand position the entire time because when we do all of our activities with the parachute, this is a much easier and more comfortable grip for them to use. So we, we start with the thumb, then we switch to the fingers. Now, when we do our ripples and waves, we will do ripples, then we will do waves on our pockets, then we will get up on our knees and do ripples again, then waves. We alternate that a few times to get all excited and then we will stand up. Once we're standing up, the parachute is at their side. We will start again with ripples and then we will do waves, again alternating. When you are standing and doing waves, be careful for them not to be jumping. We want their feet planted on the floor and waves. So after we practice our waves and ripples, there's, a, there's so many different varieties you can do in any type of order. I like to then move to popcorn. And popcorn is simple. They are going to make as many waves as they can using both hands. And we will have balls in the middle of the parachute and we are trying to pop that popcorn. So they keep their hands by their side. We dump the balls in probably anywhere from five to 10 balls and the gator skin balls. And we have them hold at their side. And then when the whistle blows, they are popping their popcorn. If they get super excited, again, remind them that they need to keep their feet planted and they're not jumping up and down. So after I've let them do popcorn for a while and I see they're getting tired, then we will stop and we will do the next one, which is catapult. Now catapult, you can do it a few different ways. You can use the balls that you already have on the parachute. That's what I do. And by the way, on popcorn, we tell them if the ball flies off, one person can go get it and throw it back on. But it, for catapult, we want to get the balls to go to the ceiling uh, as high as we can. So we are going to start in a ready position and when we 
start in a ready position, we're bending down, our knees are bent, we have both hands on those shoes, and when coach says go, we're going to say up, up, down. And when coach says down, they're going to snap that parachute down as hard as they can, and hopefully those balls are going to fly to the ceiling. We talk about teamwork and um, the necessity of making sure that we all work together and do it at the same time when coach calls out. So it's ready position, up, up, down, and snap it down. If the balls fly off, that's awesome. And if they don't, that's okay. I'll give them a, a couple different tries to see if they can get all of the balls off. Now, if the balls don't go off, I move into the next activity and I tell them, hey, we've got to work as a team to get all the balls off of the parachute. And once they're off, just let them roll off. But how are we going to do that? And so I will call on a few different kids and see, I'd love to get them thinking about how we can use science to get the balls off the parachute. So if one person says, well, let's try waves, then we'll all try waves. And typically that'll get maybe one ball off, maybe none, maybe a few. Um, and then we'll say, how about one side raise them up? And then we raise them up. But I love seeing what they come up with. Some of them are very creative and some of them have great ideas. If in three tries, we do not get it off, then I will give them the tip, the tip of they do one side from so-and-so to so-and-so halfway up. You're going to raise your shoot as high as you can while the other ones are seated crisscross. That forces the balls to roll off typically. Um, but you could also at that point move into a mountain. And I'll explain what the mountain is. So for a mountain, we're going to still use that same ready position. So I tell them, remember, it's bending your knees, two hands on the shoot. When coach says go for a mountain, you're gonna go up, up, step, step, two steps in, and then pull it down and sit on top of the parachute. So it looks like this. It's up, up, down, and sit on your knees and make sure your hands are on the chute so that the air cannot escape it. I tell them that you should not be able to see the person across from you. And we don't let our kids hit on the mountain. We have the kids put their hands on the chute, just like this. And see how high we can make that mountain. It's really important that you make sure that they take a couple of steps in when you do the mountain. After they've done the mountain successfully, and we have a good round top, then we will do it again where we say, all right, you can hit the mountain with your hands. And of course, they love to hit the mountain with that. But after that, we will then move to an igloo. In an igloo, same concept, ready position. You're going to say up, up, step, step, and pull that chute around you and sit on top. So then you're sitting on top, and you're um, inside the igloo with your hands on the chute. So now everybody is inside the igloo. Once you do that successfully, that might take a couple of times, you can have them rock back and forth or side to side and make jello, and it makes the parachute move around, and that's super fun. And there's a lot of different activities you can do once your kids learn how to do the igloo. If you're in the igloo, you can call out a color. Maybe I say blue, and if I'm blue, I crawl over to the other side and find a blue to switch places with. Or if you don't want to do that, you can say you can go to the middle, touch the floor, and come back your same spot. So lots of different things you can do uh, inside the igloo. You can sing a song, maybe you have a school song or a chant or a cheer. The kids always love to do that as well. After an igloo, I will have them get up and we're going to move with the parachute. You can start by having them seated and just moving your hands and rotating the parachute around where it's going in a circle, like a merry-go-round. You can also have them stand up and grab one hand, maybe it's the right hand, and we are moving and doing locomotive movements so that the whole parachute is moving in a circle. You can have them start out. I would definitely have them start out by walking or marching, and as you see them um, cooperating and moving well, then I would step it up to maybe a skip or a jog if your group can handle it. It's totally up to you how far you want to take that. I will say as they're moving, Say they're marching and they're moving, they sometimes tend to start moving in and give a lot of slack in your parachute. 
sometimes I will tell them, maybe step back, and then pull that um, shoot a little bit tighter. You can then tell them switch. Now we're going the other direction, and you move as a group the other direction. Another kid favorite is called the hot air balloon. So you're going to start in ready position. You're going to say up, up, and you're going to step, step, and you're going to step five or six times towards the middle. Now on this one, you have to be careful and make sure the kids go up and they step, step. They're holding that up high and they're holding with two hands. They are not letting go. As soon as they parachute, they see the parachute coming down, they've got to walk backwards. Some of them might start running and then it gets unsafe. So tell them, you go up, up, step, step, step. As soon as it comes down, you are stepping back. Very safe. And you, will, you should see a big hot air balloon. So after we've done several of those different activities, you might go into an activity. You have students have their legs straight underneath the parachute and you are doing waves or ripples. You also count out about four, maybe three or four sharks. And the sharks are underneath the parachute and everyone else is waving on the outside. If a shark tugs on your toe, okay, then they're gonna pull you in. So you start to go under. As you go under, tell the kids to be careful, hands up, make sure that they don't hit their head on the back. And they say, help, help. You then have some lifeguards that are walking around. I would do maybe three lifeguards walking around. As the lifeguards say, see you going, help, help. As you're sinking under, they will pull you out. As they pull you out, you are then safe. If you get pulled under before a lifeguard can save you, then you become a shark. Once I see probably about seven sharks, five to seven sharks, um, then I will switch and make sure that we get um, not too many people underneath the parachute. That gets a little crazy and crowded, and plus you have uh, you don't have enough people on the outside. So instead of five to seven, I would say probably seven to ten sharks underneath. I will blow the whistle. We will reset. Choose new sharks to begin, as well as new lifeguards. So this game is called parachute basketball, and all you need are two beach balls, and I have them numbered one and two, and then you need a regular size tire. On the tire, a tip for you. I just went to discount tires and said, hey, I teach elementary PE. Do you have any old tires I can have? They gave me two for free, so don't be afraid to go ask. Now, the tire is in the middle of the parachute. I have had people ask, does it get your parachute dirty? I haven't noticed that, so it hasn't been an issue for me, but you're gonna have the, par the tire in the middle and the kids seated around the parachute. I number my kids off, one, two, one, two, all the way around. And I have my kids sit either on their pockets or on their knees. It's up to them. I don't allow my kids to stand up because I worry with the pulling and shaking of the parachute, whether it's gonna rip with the tire being there in the middle. So totally up to you, but I prefer having them on my knees or on their pockets. Now, they just, on the word go, they start shaking the parachute, the balls are bouncing all around, but whichever ball lands and stays in the tire is a point for that team. So if that one landed in, we would stop play, coach would come to the middle and get it, and twos would get a point. And you keep score like basketball. Now, a version that I saw recently from Mike Graham, who is awesome to follow on Twitter, um, as well as YouTube, he does one ball and he does a class competition. So he sets his timer and he sees how long it takes for them to get the ball into the middle uh, in the tire. So that can be a warm up or just a quick uh, little activity before you start your parachute and just keep score and see who can have the um, class record for the quickest time to get the, the ball into the hoop. So this is parachute basketball, a kid favorite for sure. So those are a few of the parachute activities we do. There's so many that you can do. Um, I would definitely encourage you to look at Open Phys Ed. They do a lot of the same activities that I've been doing for many, many years. So it was fun to see that, but they're a great resource. Um, Twitter as well. And feel free to comment below with some activities that you do with parachutes so that others can um, maybe get some ideas from you. But whatever you do, make it a great day.